In contrast to this, then you have a quality. And with quality, what would you imagine? Those are the hemispheres. And if you want to have like full quality, which means what? It means awareness. This is the part. You are aware of yourself and of the surroundings. Okay, so awareness. That's very important. And basically it means orientation. Orientation. And that's what you test uh, like in neurological evaluation. You ask them, who are you? Where are you? What time it is? What happened yesterday? What are your plans? Okay. And the brain cortex is the, the one responsible for that. Okay. So, and as if we put it in a contrast to quantity you can grade it yeah like he's awake then he's sleepy and then he's in coma or whatever okay or stupor and then coma but with quality you cannot grade it it's very hard there are a thousand terms that describe like different flavors of the quality if the quality is like 900 percent okay and if the mental status is altered somehow okay but what you should imagine is that there's something typically with brain or with the cortical perfusion that someone is disoriented or he can have a seizure over there. And w with the mind, you know, first of all, you should imagine and the awareness, you should imagine the prefrontal cortexes, so, of course. Okay. So if, if the or frontal cortexes, they, they should be really well working that you are aware of yourself. And then, of course, you can have problems and, and we could get into psychiatry in this way because, you know, then it depends. Now, if it's only because of perfusion, fine, we understand that well. But if the change is because of decreased or increased different transmitters, then we're having a psychiatric problem, okay? Basically, you could say that it's not 100%, but let's say anesthesiology very much like cares about the quantity more and psychiatry is the one which which takes care of the quality. And neurology is something which like like is everywhere. But anyways, what we would like you to know is hallucinations versus illusions. And would you know what is hallucination or how would you define hallucination versus illusions? You should at least know what is hallucination and illusion. And you can really have these when there is a serious psychiatric problem, of course, or just a slight hypoperfusion of the brain, okay? And hallucination, what is it? Well, or maybe illusion is easier. Illusion means that you see something, you see a coat behind a door, glass door, and you think it's a person. That's illusion. So, so you perceive something that is there, but your brain tells you it's something else, okay? And it could be, and that's why you can have illusions, visual, or you can have auditory illusions, etc., etc. Okay, you you can you will perceive sound like something else or whatever. Okay, so that's illusion, but there's something real behind it. Your interpretation is different of the thing, what you hear or what you what you see. Okay. In contrast to this, hallucination means there's nothing, there is no sound. But you are hearing something. There is nothing in reality. There's nothing you could see and you're seeing something. Okay. Like, for example, white mice. Remember, microsopsy, a white mice when you're in delirium tremens. Okay. So that's hallucination. There's nothing in the real world, but you're seeing something there. So obviously, this is a, a problem with quality. Okay. And there are still some other terms, and uh, as I said, now delirium. That's a 
very important term. And watch out. Delirium, you know delirium trebens because everyone talks about it. And this is associated with alcohol and its withdrawal, okay, in alcoholics and whatever. But delirium itself, it's a term that we are using now more and more often. And delirere means that you are out of the furrow, if you understand. That you are disoriented. You are somehow derailed, you know, like a train derails. You are derailed. I mean, the term evolved. There was much more complicated definition, but now it means he's disoriented. So you use this term all the time in ambulance. If something happens, someone is after car accident, bleeds, and then if he's disoriented, you can say he's in delirium. And typically with delirium, but doesn't have to be. Important is the confusion. Okay, but also remember, you can have hallucinations to it. That could be, but it doesn't have to be. And thousand other things, but still one more. And that is aggressivity. Okay. And remember, all people with hypoperfusion or brain, they are very often in delirium and, and it's very natural for them to be aggressive, for example. So remember, delirium means that there's something with quality and it's rather reversible, okay? Basically, you should understand delirium has a organic cause. Maybe hypoperfusion, so ischemia of the brain, or definitely something obvious, or the alcohol, you can put it there, okay? Yeah? So delirium, it can happen to all of us, okay? In contrast to psychiatric diseases. Because that's where the hallucinations are stable. They are chronic. You understand that? Okay. So basically, yeah, if you're in delirium, you sort of uh, simulate some psych psychiatric disease, but it's just organic. When the perfusion normalizes or the toxicity of whatever you ingest normalizes, you're fine again. Okay, that's very important to understand so delirium very important term for you okay so it's reversible and let's say obvious organic cause like alcohol ischemia intoxication or whatever okay in contrast with psychiatric disorders, okay? And by the way, I don't know if to confuse you enough, but in all the times they were calling this amensi. So in old books, maybe, uh, it's not used anymore, amensi, okay? But this was sort of, now we use delirium, that's the one you should use. So he's in delirium. And if you come to a car accident, yeah, many people are in delirium and they will attack you and it's so normal. Okay. So that's one thing. And maybe also dementia, if you know, you know. So amen state is reversible. Dementia, well, how is dementia defined? Dementia. Dementia means irreversible loss of neurons. That's important. Irreversible. You're losing neurons all the time, okay? The causes could be like really progressive ones, like Alzheimer's or Huntington's or Jakob Kreutzfeld, as you want, okay? So uh, these are the most common uh, causes. And what is typical for them? There is aphasia, there is apraxia, agnosia, decreased judgment, okay? Decreased intellect. But the arousal is okay. And basically, uh, the important thing is to tell the difference between someone who's in delirium and dementia. It's pretty easy. Because if you ask someone who's in delirium, what, what is one plus one? He, he's going to be totally disoriented, uh, won't respond uh, normally. In contrast to someone with dementia, he's going to say two. Because typically, these abilities are preserved in most of the cases. They just won't remember that you asked them this uh, one minute ago, for example. Okay? Yeah? 
or they will forget some words or whatever, okay? But if you ask them right away, they could seem pretty normal with dementia. They're able to count in a way, and so, so but there's a problem with memory, etc., etc., and it depends. And there are also pseudo-dementias, and what is that? And th why I'm mentioning is because I want you to think of it. Because you could really help someone who has pseudo-dementia, and... And they look like they have dementia, but if you do one thing and you check it, and I want you to remember that you should check it, you could really save them. And that is especially when you're having hypothyroidism. It always depends how long they have it. So the sooner you will correct that, the better they will be. Okay. So remember, decreased thyroid hormones. So hypothyroidism. And the other one is, please remember B12 deficiency. And this is the one you should really remember. Because, you know, B12, it, it changes your blood state. Everyone knows that. B12 is what? Megaloblastic, remember? Okay. Or macrocytic anemia. Okay. So it's macrocytic anemia. But the thing is, if you give enough of folic acid, uh, the blood could be normal. But B12... It's also important for neurons. So watch out. Always check for levels of B12. If there, You should basically, if someone, in, he looks like dementia, check B12. Check thyroid. And in some cases, you will really find it. If you supplement this, they will, they will be doing fine. Okay? And I know, don't want to say there are horrible cases where they just didn't think of this. And basically, the quality of the life of the person vanished. And this was just the fault of the clinician who just didn't know it. Okay. So B12 deficiency, very important. And they can have peripheral neuropathy, which is very typical with B12 deficiency. So only peripheral neuropathy and you can help them. And don't rely on if blood is fine, the, the size of the erythrocytes is okay. Still, they could have B12 deficiency. Okay. Good. And they are, they're having also depression and whatever. Okay. And maybe from the mechanical ones, it could be normal pressure hydrocephalus. So normal pressure hydrocephalus. And you can well treat this because you just put a catheter into the ventricles and you shunt it. You release the tension over there and it's solved by ventricle peritoneal shunt. Watch out, from the brain ventricles, you put a tube which leads under the skin to your peritoneum, okay? And it has a valve which keeps the pressure not to go too high and always releases the amount of liquor. And this really improves the health of the patients. So watch out if you do a CT and uh, the ventricles are suspicious, then think of this. Okay. So guys, I guess you understand the difference between quantity and quality. But watch out. There's one term which talks about the both parts that they are 100%. And, and that is lucidity. That someone is lucid. It means that he has a clear mind. And it says he's fully awake and fully oriented, as you all are. You are all lucid. And it's funny that sometimes neurologists, and especially neurosurgeons, whoever, they always say that the patient is lucid and oriented, or lucid and vigil. And he doesn't need to say he's vigil because it's in the term lucid. If you are lucid, you are full. You have all all packages, okay? You You are awake. And you are oriented. So remember, if you say you're lucid, he's lucid, he has 100% orientation and 100% vigility. So lucid means he's vigil plus oriented. Okay? So that was quantity quality. Very important. So, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.